Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I am buzzing. I am so, 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 so excited because today we are doing something I have literally never done before. And that is, well, we're kind of going rock pooling, but we're going snorkel rock pooling. <laughs> Basically, snorkel rock pooling is when the rock pools are lovely and deep and you can snorkel through them instead of wade through them in wellies. So I haven't done this before because Honestly, I think that I don't think there's ever been a day in Scotland where it's worked out that the tides are good, I am free, and we can do this. But today it is absolutely roasting. I am so hot. Like, I just can't wait to like strip off. You have heard of land suits. You have seen the Avengers suit up. This is the the wetsuit super marine barges power transformation of getting changed into different clothes. <laughs> now I 100% don't need this. So this is a rash vest, which usually goes under wetsuits. It's kind of, I think it's supposed to stop the wetsuit rubbing, especially if you're like diving, I've got like a lot of rubbing going on here. But the reason I decided I needed to bring it because there's a little walrus on the front. There's a little walrus on the front and he's really cute. So he can come with me. <laughs> that's the reason I'm wearing this and I think it looks a bit badass if I'm completely honest thinking oh yeah oh yeah oh, I love wearing wetsuits well I think it's about time we get to it don't you um you can talk through a mask normally but if you talk through your nose it sounds funny and it's better <laughs> oh my goodness it's already so refreshing I'm just gonna float in ah so excited
so much life. Immediately as soon as I got in the water, I was surrounded by those amazing schools of fish. Now I'm going to talk about them a bit more at the end because I managed to get some amazing slow-mo footage of them because they just kept like spiraling around me throughout the, the couple of hours that I was in the water. Um, and there's actually two species of those silverfish that are moving around really fast, so that's really awesome. So stay tuned to the end to hear about those. But this little fella is a little mysid shrimp, and they're just so curious. There was lots, lots of um, crabs around as well. This was quite a little one. A couple of times, um, their bigger friends ran under me and made me jump, which is really funny because that doesn't really happen rock pooling. But when you're surrounded and in the water, like with them, you just feel like you're in this alien environment and every little movement does. <laughs> so, well, it did make me jump. So I absolutely love this golden yellow seaweed that you're seeing. This is called sea oak isn't really something I knew about but I've really loved it the last couple of years and in particular in this rock pool I am a massive fan of this seaweed for two amazing reasons. Number one is that there is absolutely no way I would have spotted this had it not decided to live and land on this bright yellow seaweed. Look at this gorgeous red stalked jellyfish. So stalked jellyfish are types of jellyfish, but they're in their own separate class because obviously they're a bit different than the normal ones. These guys do not move around. But what I love is that I read a small fact that scientists think that potentially they may be able to cartwheel short distances, which I think is a fantastic form of tiny movement. I would love to do a video all about stalked jellyfish. They are really awesome. So please subscribe and I'll put it in another video because to do these weirdos justice, they need a full length video. So there's a second reason I absolutely adore this sea oak and it's because another type of creature lives in it. Now I'm snorkeling around, trying to keep an eye out of different things, but unlike rock falling, I get like hyper-focused on one individual thing. Like I'm not looking around on all the rocks and looking for movement. I'm kind of looking for movement, but you just get zoned in on what's in front of you. Honestly, there could have been a shark behind me and I probably wouldn't have been able to tell. <sighs> I wish there was a shark behind me. That would have been awesome. And... I was videoing this crab. I thought it was really cool that I saw crab, but you know, not the most exciting thing. And then all of a sudden, this fish swam straight past me. And if it wasn't for the fact that he decided to come right in front of me out of the sea oak, I wouldn't have seen him. And this is a stickleback. So sticklebacks are fantastic fish because they are very odd looking. And what do they look like? They look like sea oak. They are adapted to blend in and really they are so difficult to spot. But as I kept going around, I kept finding more and more and saw two at the same time. And they were just living in this, you know, giant forest to them of sea oak. And it was really special. From looking into the colourful seaweeds, I was also paying attention to what was living at the bottom of the rock pool. There were these big patches of kind of sandy areas and then on top sat all of this seaweed that had been washed up. Now that happens a lot where I am at St Andrews. It gets quite rough and all this seaweed that's been about gets chucked out and lands on top of the rock pools. But actually in this case it was doing the sea, well, it usually does the sea life a favour as well because as it decomposes, it puts nutrients in the water. But actually, it was providing the perfect hiding spot for so many creatures to be under this seaweed. And so I kept having a, a close uh, eye on it, but even I was surprised with what I saw. This is an absolutely ginormous flatfish. Okay, so I say 
ginormous. Actually, one of the biggest fishes that you can ever find in the UK is a flatfish. It's a turbot, which can get absolutely huge. So really, in terms of like flatfish in general, it's quite a small flatfish. But in terms of what you usually find in rock pools, it is massive. So I think with the white spots, this fish is a flounder. And if that doesn't cause you to burst out into a copyrighted Disney song, then that was a completely wasted opportunity. So um, please take a second to do that now. This big, beautiful flatfish was decent size. He was bigger than my hand and he was quite a chunky, a chunky fella. Um, but because he stayed still, I just got this beautiful up close um, footage of his scales. Because he was that much bigger, we could see the details. And I oh, just go and check out my other video where we I video baby flatfish, where there was a couple of months earlier, like thousands of baby flatfish and compare that to this. It's just so awesome to see all walks of life in this rock pool. And this guy has got what a stare. So flatfish are absolutely incredible ambush predators. They blend in so well with their environment and have these big old eyes on the top of their head watching out for anything that swims close to them. And they'll do a really quick sudden movement and they'll gobble up whatever it's going for. And I just love this understanding between nature. He knew I wasn't gonna hurt him. And he let me slowly like remove some of the seaweed so that I could get a better look. And it was just an all round wonderful experience. And when he did decide to go, he um, scared the absolute Jesus out of me. I was really excited about this. This is a new species that we haven't seen on the channel before. Not the hermit crab, we've seen plenty of them, but growing on its shell is a type of hydroid known as a hermit crab fur. So this species only lives on the shells of hermit crabs. How specialized is that? And I've never seen it before, so I was very excited. So you can see as I'm setting up this shot of being, I'm trying to do a nice snorkel thing, not only does one fish come in, you can see shoals of other fish swimming around me. That is how much fish life was just in this one rock ball. This isn't even like the full on sea. This is just in this rock ball. It was incredible. So now we're gonna break down a bit more some of the other species that we have seen swimming around my head the entire video. So this little fishy, I found really special because I'd done a video painting something very similar to this right back when I first started the channel and I called this Charlie um, because he was a type of dadoid which is a type of cod and I have the painting literally hanging on my wall and it was just a special experience to see this fish again was really awesome. It is difficult to tell with juvenile species but my best guess is that this is a juvenile whiting. But then I spotted something that I could barely see. It was a tiny little thing that the camera struggled to focus on and these next two species are incredibly special. Unsurprisingly this minute special species is called a transparent goby because they are transparent. That's right, transparent. This next species which is a bit bigger and was a lot easier to film is also a bit transparent, but is known as a crystal goby, which just summarizes it so beautifully. I had the best time watching this species and I think the film I got from it was potentially one of my favorite bits of video that I have ever taken because it, oh, look at it. You can just, you can see the insides of this fish. You can see the insides from the outside. The inside from the... Uh, amazing. And then we have the zoomy zoomy fish. This is not their name. It's just what I like to call them. These are sand eels. There are two species you get in the UK. 
greater or lesser sandals, which seems mean to say, but it's not about their personality. It's not about their self-identity. Um, it's just a way to distinguish between the species, but I can't and many people can't without really getting them. But what was interesting is that these had parasites on them or one or two did. You can see one of them has like these pink little weird mini sausages on them and that's parasites on the fish, which was really cool to see. Bad for the fish, good for the science in me washing it. And these silverfish, which are also swimming around, it's something different. These are sand smelts. So, I mean, they look quite similar, but they're different. And I think that is really awesome. And then you can tell they're a different species because the bodies are slightly squatter. They're not as long and they're a rounder fish. Interestingly though, the same parasites were on both species. There are again, more, more shoals of fish these were incredible and so important the reason i say having this fish species here in particular is really important is because this is juvenile cod which is really exciting to see so many of them humans have a lovely tendency to take more than um necessary and cod is one of those species that has been overfished and their numbers have um been hit by this there is actually um i think some evidence that they're doing better now because there's more regulations on how much cod you can have but it's just really nice to see so many juvenile cod in one place knowing that this species has had a hard time or has having a hard time um because of human impact and they are just the patterns on them the little barbel on the front that makes them look like got a goatee, I just think they're marvellous. This is honestly one of the best things I have ever done. It's so cool and relaxing and <laughs> chill. Honestly, oh, if I could live in the sea, I would so live in the sea. <laughs> oh, it's just a shame. It's a bit cold. Like, it's not that cold, but it is a bit cold. <laughs> Whereas, you know, the nice tropics, <laughs> you'd be snuggling all day and you won't feel the cold. Whereas here it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to shiver. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. <laughs> I just can't believe it. It's so awesome to feel like I'm just chilling. Oh, sometimes in life we just need a little bit of extra awesome fun. This <laughs> is the rock ball. <laughs> So with joy. Now the important problem is, um, and it's a shame that when I do these videos and I talk to you that you actually can't physically come in person, not only because I'd love to show you all individually and together the amazing things in real life, but also um, I need a hand with this. Do we know what has occurred? I can't see. I feel like my snorkel has decided that it wants my hair. And you know what? I'd give it to it if it just didn't hurt quite as much as it does. So um, I'm going to end today's video um, on a note that uh, I, I'm minorly stuck in my snorkel. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, you may see me next video um, with it still in my hair. <laughs> so tune back in next Wednesday for another video. Please like, share and subscribe. And um and uh, yeah, the answer will be if my hair is free next Wednesday or not. We shall see. <laughs> I had the best time. I hope you guys can get out snorkeling and rock pools too soon. And uh, see you next week.